Good to have you company. Welcome back to this edition of Inside Story. Now, Pakistan's considered an integral part of the U.S. strategy against the Taliban and al-Qaeda. This, though, isn't something new. Pakistan's involvement in the so-called war on terror started in the era of George Bush and former Pakistani President Pervez Musharraf, around about seven years ago. And that partnership saw billions of dollars in aid go to Islamabad. It also saw the extradition of hundreds of al-Qaeda suspects and American attacks that at times resulted in the deaths of civilians. The alliance took its toll on Musharraf and the Pakistani army. They were perceived as either incapable or unwilling to defend their own people. Musharraf's popularity dwindled and finally he went. The new Pakistan government began countering U.S. attacks on its soil and started a dialogue with the Taliban instead of, in many cases, fighting them. Also, concerns of links between Pakistan's military intelligence and the militants caused another dent in the U.S.-Pakistan partnership. In his speech on Friday, Obama also dictated the new terms of the relationship with Pakistan. After years of mixed results, we will not and cannot provide a blank check. Pakistan must demonstrate its commitment to rooting out al-Qaeda and the violent extremists within its borders. And we will insist that action be taken one way or another, when we have intelligence about high-level terrorist targets. With us still, our guests in Kabul, Khalid Pashtun in Vienna, Cheryl Bernard and Islamabad, Ahmed Qureshi. Mr. Qureshi, let me come to you first of all. Accusations from the U.S. president that the Pakistani intelligence service is actually helping the Taliban, in many cases providing it with information. Do you believe that to be the case? David, the problem uh, with our re relationship with Washington is basically this. Since 2001, since 9-11, America's focus in Afghanistan has been to secure its own interest without care at I'm all. I'm going to bring you straight back because this is, we're narrowing down the conversation here. Do you think there are elements within Pakistan's security service that are actually helping the Taliban? Well, I'm just telling you, David, that we have interests that diverge. And if America thinks that they can achieve their own interest in Afghanistan without care to Pakistani interest, that's not going to happen. If it is in Pakistan's interest to maintain relationship with different parties, different players within the Afghan well, there's, uh, there's political a big spectrum, difference. Forgive that me, is Pakistan's There is interest. a big difference between maintaining relations with certain parties and giving them information. Uh, David, Pakistan has strategically no problem with uh, any of the Afghan parties, including the Afghan Taliban. Our problem is with al-Qaeda. We share that with the Americans. Personally, as a Pakistani citizen, as somebody who's watching the situation, I don't see that Pakistan has any problem with the Afghan Taliban. Okay, so there's nothing rotten about the Pakistan intelligence services as far as you're concerned. I don't know if, I don't know if the Pakistani intelligence service maintains that relationship or not. What I'm, um, and I think the Pakistani intelligence should not maintain relationship, should have an equal level uh, approach with all the players within the Afghan political spectrum. Uh, what I'm telling you is simply this. If the United States administration in Kabul has a problem with one of the key players within the Afghan political spectrum, that problem needs to be resolved inside Afghanistan. It is not Pakistan's responsibility responsibility to eliminate Afghan Taliban. It is the responsibility of the United States forces there, the Kabul government, uh, the people who are active in Kabul to bring all these parties on board. It is not the responsibility and cannot be the responsibility of Pakistan to eliminate Afghan Taliban. Al-Qaeda okay. is a different thing. Yes, they are an enemy of Pakistan, an enemy of other uh, of the United States. Cheryl Bernard. Them and we're okay, doing okay. I, I would like yeah, Cheryl yeah, Bernard to respond. This it seems like a, a somewhat baffling statement. For one thing, to describe the Taliban as a political actor within the spectrum of Afghan politics. You are saying that a group of extremist, violent terrorists who are firebombing police stations, burning down schools, throwing acid on school children, that they, you're equating them with legitimate political players in Afghanistan. That's really just uh, not. I'm sorry, Cheryl. Afghan, Afghan Taliban have at denied having anything to do with throwing acid. At the same time, we have to go back. To just with, let me finish. Let acid. me finish, please. We need to go back a bit more historically in time as well, and th remember that the origin of the Taliban itself was actually it grew out of on a very unfortunate joint decision made by the U.S. and Pakistan at that time during the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan to support to support these sorts of elements uh, in in the Pakistan in the in the Afghan resistance to the Soviet occupation. 
And at that point, Pakistan decided that having something like the Taliban as their actors in Afghanistan would give them a lot of control over Afghan political system. And at uh, the I'm present sorry, time, Sharon, but, 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 there but are rogue elements are incorrect. Rogue okay, elements okay. Are okay. In, we, 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 we do if have. Had, if Pakistan had control the over the Taliban, Pakistan they would have military. handed over rogue Osama bin Laden to their as friendship for our request with the Taliban. We have a third player are, are in this, I'm and it's a discussion between all of you. I reject the conclusions. Um, I'm going I'm, I'm to stop this, this particular Pakistan side of this at the moment and ask uh, Cheryl Barnard uh, whether you agree with Ahmed Qureshi that um, if the Pakistan intelligence service is helping anybody, it is the Afghan Taliban and not al-Qaeda, or has it, in your opinion, been helping al-Qaeda? I think there are rogue elements that are helping al-Qaeda al al and the Taliban. There are ro rogue elements that have a long-standing relation. I don't just think that. This is known that they are supporting them and, and also al elements within the military, not the official military and not official SIS. So if I were no, a Pakistani, Cheryl. this would be Do something that would worry me that a lot. Do you have any evidence that links? There is no evidence. To that there's out. no evidence to this fact. Well, and there are volumes no of evidence to, this fact. to that effect. No, there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of talk. But the fact of the matter is that Al-Qaeda has killed a lot of Pakistani soldiers. We have a blood enmity with, with Al-Qaeda, and Pakistan has eliminated every, in fact, senior members of Al-Qaeda in Pakistan, and, has, and Pakistan has killed these people. There's no question about that. There's no evidence. There's a lot of talk, frankly speaking, but there's, there's, uh, there's no evidence to support any of, uh, any of those accusations that Pakistan maintains any relationship whatsoever. The, the, hey, this is very Pakistan. interesting, Pakistan. very interesting, not, but not I, I have Pakistan got to bring state, in, I've Pakistan. got to bring in somebody from the Afghan point of view here, uh, Khalid Pashtun. Um, uh, there's been no love you. lost in, in, in the last few years between Pakistan's government and um, the Afghan government. Is that because of perceptions, as Ahmed Qureshi say, or perhaps because of evidence, as uh, Cheryl Bernard says? Uh, let me explain something. I would fully agree with Ms. Cheryl. Uh, of course, I don't agree with Mr. Qureshi. One thing is very important I like to bring to everyone's attention. Taliban was born, raised, education, educated, and trained in Pakistan, even when there was jihad going on against the USSR. After that, when the, US, the, the, the topple of the USSR or the communist regime in Afghanistan, Taliban were still very young in Pakistan. And then they were raised and they were sent to Afghanistan. And Al-Qaeda was part of this, this uh, agreement. Al-Qaeda was also in Afghanistan working shoulder by shoulder with Taliban. After the U.S. Uh, attack in Afghanistan uh, in the 2001, actually the Taliban and Al-Qaeda left Afghanistan together for Pakistan, and they were hiding there in the tribal area. And then the Afghan here intelligence Khaled, agency... Khaled, can I ask you a question me, here? Khaled, may, may excuse I ask me, Mr. You Qureshi. Here? You got you to gotta listen. We were listening to you. No, I have now to ask you a question. I, I have a simple no, question. No, no, Ahmed Qureshi, no, let him, you, you have had plenty of time, Ahmed Qureshi. Listen, I'm not going to... I want to hear what Khaled Pashtun has to say. I, I, you got to listen, my friend, because I was listening to you. When, when Afghan intelligence agency were accusing Pakistan for the last eight years, the international community never agreed with Afghan intelligence until they found the hard evidence from the computer, from the communication uh, equipment, from their own intelligence. Now, after eight years, Finally, thanks to uh, President Obama, he agreed that now we see the problem in Af not only in Afghanistan, but in Pakistan. And now the Pakistan president, ex-president Mr. Musharraf also admitted, yes, now I admit that the problem is in Pakistan, not in Afghanistan. Pakis Afghanistan is actually the front line for the fighting. Afga Pakistan is the place where they are tr getting trained, where they are receiving the fund, where they are receiving the moral support, and where they are receiving the people support from the from the tribal point of view so now i would like to just make my synopsis that the problem is not in afghanistan is in pakistan but now we have to treat them equally pakistan and afghanistan which mr obama said now they have to fight in both fronts cheryl cheryl barnard i'm um, listening to what the the two representatives of their countries David, have I, to I, say I, no i'm I, sorry i'm sorry i no, ask, you may not at this moment i'm awfully sorry you, we can hear you in the background but i want to go to cheryl barnard bernard to, to get some some kind of overview of this if it is at all possible when you see the representatives of Afghanistan and Pakistan, admittedly not elected here, do they identify to you the polarization of the two countries and the, the difficulties that whatever your strategy 
in the area is going to be, it's going to be a very, very tough one. I don't think so, really. Um, for example, I'm so heartened by this rule of law movement in Pakistan, which has grown so much lately, where you have uh, judges and lawyers standing up for good governance and, you know, a steady rule of law in their country. There's a very strong civil society in Pakistan as well. And that civil society and that good governance, they don't want their own border regions to become a, a permanent war zone and an ungoverned territory where extremists can operate at liberty. So I actually think that the bottom line is that the Afghan people and the Pakistani people have a, a strong overlap of interest. And I'm optimistic that with this plan, which focuses also on economic development for both states, which certainly the people will see as being of benefit to themselves, that with that comprehensive approach, this, this can be turned in a good direction. I asked you that question. I'm very interested to, to hear your response, partly because um, your husband, Zalme Khalizad, um, it has been suggested that he might run uh, for the presidency of Afghanistan, and therefore you are a possible first lady of Afghanistan. <laughs> what do you make of that? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, I've heard that rumor, of course. It's been around for a while. Uh, my husband has often said, and that's, therefore I feel comfortable uh, saying it on his behalf here, that he is interested, of course, in the country of his birth and origin and cares very much about it and will continue to be helpful to it in whatever way he can, but uh, he's not an Afghan politician. And what do you think about the idea of uh, going back to Kabul? Could you twist his arm? <laughs> um, I, I will mention, though, since you, since you brought it up, that a, a very important new group and movement has formed, uh, has been meeting in, in places such as Gardez and Kabul. Uh, to, to, they've they've uh, issued a, a joint statement discussing where they think the country should go beyond just these elections, because just focusing on August and the elections is, is, is not good either. It's very contentious. So they've got sort of a larger, a larger program and plan that, that I think uh, it puts it on a good foundation. Cheryl Bernard, thank you very much indeed. The politician's answer, of course, there at the very end of our inside story. Also, my thanks in Kabul, Khaled Pashtun. Very uh, interesting well, we conversation. Say, it's unfair, it's unfair. Say, uh, Mr. No, no, David, I'm sorry, but you unfair. had more say than anybody it's else. It's not unfair. Sadly, it's television. We've run out of time. Thanks very much to you three for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story, and thanks to you for watching. From me, David Foster, and the rest of the team, bye-bye for now.